Okay, I hit go live. I don't know if that means anything, as we all know. It might not. I am frankly shocked. Yep, I'm live. Hello, and welcome to Tea and New Book Tuesday. As I was saying, I am borderline shocked that I am on time today <laughs> because I was on time for nothing else. It took me, I live in Baldwin County. Oh, and I hope everyone has come through the storm okay and that you're all safe and your whole families are safe. And uh, I think, I don't know how many people in Mobile County have gone without power. I know some of my coworkers had said they went without it for a few hours. We did okay in Baldwin County, but as always, and I don't fully understand why this happened this morning, other than it just did, because it always does, um, traffic was insane trying to get out of Baldwin County to the point, yeah, I know I'm being live streamed. You explain things to me, the weirdest times. It took me, and by me, I mean me and my sister who was actually driving, an hour to get to town from the part of Baldwin County we live in. And that is normally 10 minutes, I mean, it's not nothing, but it was ridiculous. Once we got on to 10, we were kind of okay. But overall, it was a couple of hours to get to downtown Mobile today. It is normally 25 minutes. So that's how my morning went. I then ignored every email I had, didn't read the news, didn't look at anything else, and just was like, prepare, prepare to your new book Tuesday. Because next week, I, next week I won't be having a show because we have a Monday holiday and it's a little weird trying to prepare right before, like, I, as you can see, I've been rushed this morning. I don't want to put up together another rush show. Um, and then I'm going on my, on vacation <laughs> and I will be arriving. I'll be back the Tuesday, two weeks from today when I have a new episode. So I felt like I can't not do today's because if that happens, there's not one next, then it's like two weeks. It's just, uh, anyway, we are moving on because we're here now and we're gonna talk about books. We're gonna be happy about the books. It's gonna be a good time with the books. All right, today we are moving on to October. We're gonna talk about the biggest releases. So this is stuff that is very likely to be on the new book flyer, which may be turning into a new book brochure as we have a new design for it that looks really neat. Um, so these are the books that are most likely to have holds on them pretty much as soon as they appear in the catalog. They're all already in the catalog. So if you want these, put a hold on it today. Trust me on that one. But of course, time for my favorite part of the show and yours, giveaways. All my giveaways today are advanced reader copies that are coming out in October. So everything I have here hasn't been released yet. Uh, you won't have access to it for another like six weeks at bare minimum, but you could end up, at, end up with it in your hand as early as today if it is what you want. As always with the, group, the giveaways, put the name of the book that you prefer, that you want, in the comments below with your MPL location for pickup. Uh, the book will go to the first person to comment for that book. And I only have one copy of each. Uh, yeah, I have to have the MPL location for pickup, which I've already said, but never hurts to repeat. So uh, yeah, these are the books. Starting off with, 12 Steps to Changing Yourself and the World, an Abolitionist Handbook by Patrice Coolers. So this right here, this is a guidebook to changing yourself and the world. After 20 years of organizing movement work, Patrice Coolers, the co-founder of Black Lives Matter and the New York Times bestselling author of When They Call You a Terrorist, has set out to define what abolitionist practice looks like in our day-to-day -day lives. In this paradigm-shifting interactive handbook, Cooler's guides, engages, and motivates us all 
to understand who we are and how we can bring the idea of abolition to light in ourselves and our communities. It begins with her 12 steps to changing yourself and the world. Each of these steps is followed by guidelines, including advice on what to read, watch, see, and hear, the personal experiences of Patrice and others within the movement, and suggestions on how to evolve this process and evolve within this process and in real life scenarios. Let the work begin. Okay, so that's 12 steps to changing the world, yourself, to changing yourself and the world, or an abolitionist handbook, whichever one. I think abolitionist handbook is probably easier to write. Next up, we have Smile, the story of a face by Sarah Rule. Okay. And most of these are blurbs. With a play on the, with a play opening on Broadway and every reason to smile, Sarah Rule had just survived a high-risk pregnancy when she discovers the left side of her face is completely paralyzed. She is assured that 90% of Bell's palsy patients see spontaneous improvement and experience full recovery, like Rule's own mother. But Sarah is in the unlucky 10%. And for a woman, wife, mother, and artist working in the theater, the paralysis and the disconnect between the interior and exterior brings significant and specific changes. So Rule begins an intense decades-long search for a cure while simultaneously grappling with the reality of her new face, one that, while recognizably her own, is incapable of accurately communicating feelings or intentions. In a series of piercing, witty, and lucid meditations, Rule chronicles her journey as a patient. She explores the struggle of a body yearning to match its inner landscape, the pain of postpartum depression, and the story of a marriage being a playwright and working mom to three small children and the desire for a resilient spiritual life in the face of illness. So that's the story of a face by Sarah Rule or smile story of a face by Sarah Rule. Okay. Is this, this is the only fiction of today. We are not like them by Christine Pride and Joe Piazza. And once again, okay, so this is a lifelong friendship between two women, one black and one white, is tested when a police shooting connects them in ways they could never have expected, a powerful and poignant explo exploration of race in America today. And yes, these are the authors. Here we go. So we are not like them. And finally, we have The Redemption of Bobby Love, written by Bobby and Cheryl Love. Bobby and Cheryl Love were living in Brooklyn, happily married for decades, when the FBI and NYPD appeared at their door and demanded to know from Bobby, in front of his shocked wife and children, what is your name? No, what's your real name? Bobby's secret was out. He had started getting into legal trouble at the age of 13, seeing only limitations around him in the Jim Crow South and little opportunity to build a life on his own terms. In the ensuing years, the pull of the streets and the adrenaline rush from living a fast life proved too alluring. By his early 20s, Bobby was a master thief and a with a serious criminal record. He soon found himself facing a 30 year prison sentence, but Bobby outwitted his jailers. He escaped, fled to New York and started a new life under a new name, Bobby Love. Over the next 28 years, Bobby lived as a law-abiding citizen. He married Cheryl, worked multiple jobs to support their growing family, coached Little League, attended church, took their kids to Disneyland, and led an otherwise normal life. Then it all came crashing down. With the drama of the jailbreak story and the incredible tension of a life lived in hiding, the redemption of Bobby Love is an unbelievably but true account of building a life from scratch, the pain of festering secrets in a marriage, and the unbreakable bonds of faith and love that keep a family together. So that's The Redemption of Bobby Love, a story of faith, family, and justice. Go. Again, if you want any of those, put the name of the book in the comments below along with your MPO location for pickup, and I will start sending them out as 
pretty much as soon as this uh, this ends today. All right. So let's go ahead and share my screen so that you can see the covers of the books that are coming out in October. Come on, do what I asked you to do. Hit present, there we go. All right, so October titles. We have already done giveaways. Let's get into October hits. Start with highly anticipated Crossroads by Jonathan Franzen. He's a very popular author. Um, so it's December 23rd, 1971. And the heavy wind, and the heavy wind, bah, 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 bah. Oh, my tea today <laughs> is a cherry coke because two hours in the car, I was falling asleep. And I got plenty of sleep last night. Arguably I've had more this weekend because I got to sleep in yesterday while it was storming and the library had to close because of I don't know. Um, but I just needed a little caffeine this morning. All right. Once again, it's December 23rd, 1971. And heavy weather is forecast for Chicago. Russ Hildebrandt, the associate pastor of a liberal suburban church, is on the brink of breaking free of a marriage he finds joyless. Unless his wife, Marion, who has her own secret life, beats him to it. The eldest child, Clem, is coming home from college on fire with moral absolutism, having taken an action that will shatter his father. Clem's sister, Becky, long the social queen of her high school class, has sharply veered into the counterculture, while their brilliant younger brother, Perry, who's been selling drugs to seventh graders, has resolved to be a better person. Each of the Hildebrands seeks a freedom that each of the others threaten to complicate. Jonathan Franzen novels are celebrated for their unforgettably vivid characters and for their keen-eyed take on contemporary America. Now in Crossroads, Friends and Ventures back into the past and explores the history of two generations. With characteristic humor and complexity and, even, and an even greater warmth, he conjures a world that resonates powerfully with our own. A tour de force of interwoven perspectives and sustained suspense is an action largely unfolding on a single winter day. Crossroads is the story of a Midwestern family at a pivotal moment of moral crisis. Jonathan Franzen's gift for melding the small picture and the big picture has never been more dazzlingly evident. This is actually gonna be a new series and this is book one. It already got a starred review from Kirkus. They don't like to give out praise or they don't seem to, uh, but they like this. We are also getting it as an audiobook. So if you're interested in Crossroads by Jonathan Franzen, it comes out October 5th. As we've discussed, there's always a day in each month when all of the books want to come out. And in October, it's the 5th. I've noticed it is usually the first Tuesday of the month. I guess if you're telling people my book comes out in October, you want it to kind of be at the front because then it'll be like, they can expect it relatively quickly. Maybe, I don't know. I am very tired and not making all that much sense. So we'll move on. Next up is Lincoln Highway by author whose name is spelled like you see on the screen. <laughs> Amor Towels, Amor Towels. I don't think that's his, Amor Towles? Tules, I don't know. We're gonna call him the author from now on. In June, 1954, 18-year-old Emmett Watson, who had a normal name, is driven home to Nebraska by the warden of the work farm where he has served a year for involuntary manslaughter. His mother long gone, his father recently deceased, and the family farm foreclosed upon by the bank. Emmett's intention is to pick up his eight-year-old brother and head west where they can start their lives anew. But when the warden drives away, Emmett discovers that two friends from the work farm have hidden themselves in the trunk of the warden's car. Together, they have hatched an altogether different plan for Emmett's future. This has starred reviews from Kirkus, Publishers Weekly, and Booklist. And that many starred reviews means it's probably going to be 
on the short list for one of the best books of the year. We are also getting it on audio if you prefer it as an audiobook. But if you're interested in Lincoln Highway, it comes out October 5th. All right. Last Girl Ghosted by Lisa Unger. She met him through a dating app. An intriguing picture on a screen, a date at a downtown bar, what she thought might be just a quick hookup quickly became much more. She fell for him hard. It happens sometimes, a powerful connection with a perfect stranger that takes you by surprise. Could it be love? But then just as things were getting real, he stood her up. Then he disappeared, profiles deleted, phone disconnected, she was ghosted. That's not what ghosted means by the way or at least that's a broadening of the term. Maybe it was her fault. She shared too much too fast. Soon she learned, but, 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 but isn't that always what women think, that they're the ones to blame? Soon she learns there were others, girls who thought they were in love, girls who later went missing. She had been looking for a connection, but now she's looking for answers. Chasing a digital trail into his dark past and hers, she finds herself on a dangerous hunt, and she's not sure whether she's the predator or the prey. This got a star review from Publishers Weekly. It is, we are also buying it on audio. If you're interested in Last Girl Ghosted, it comes out, say it with me, October 5th. All right, Two Sisters Detective Agency by James Patterson and Candace Fox. This is not noted as a new series, but if I know Patterson, it's probably a new series, or at least if it does well at all, it will be. So, attorney Rhonda Bird returns home after a long estrangement when she learns her father has died. There, she makes two important discoveries. Her father stopped being an accountant and opened up a private detective agency, and she has a teenage half-sister named Baby. Baby brings in a client to the detective agency, a young man who claims he was abducted, during the course of the investigation, Rhonda and Baby become entangled in a dangerous case involving a group of overprivileged young adults who break laws for fun, their psychopath ringleader, and an ex-assassin victim who decides to hunt them down for revenge. Okay, so if you're interested in this one, we're also getting it on audio. Uh, Two Sisters Detective Agency comes out October 5th. Oh, no, we're still on this page. The Butler by Daniel Steele. Oh, she likes, she likes crazy names. I had to look up two times how to pronounce this. Joachim? Jo Joachim? Yeah. Joachim von Hartmann was, was born and raised in Buenos Aires by his loving German mother, hmm, inseparable from his identical twin. When Joachim moves to Paris with his mother in his late teens, his twin stays behind and enters a dark world. Meanwhile, Joachim begins training to be a butler, fascinated by the precision and intense demands, and goes to work in some of the grandest homes in England. His brother never reappears. Olivia White has given 10 years of her life to her magazine, which failed, taking all her dreams with it. A bequest from her mother allows her a year in Paris to reinvent herself. She needs help setting up a home in a charming Parisian apartment. It is then that her path and Joachim's cross. Joachim takes a job working for Olivia as a lark and enjoys the whimsy of a different life for a few weeks, which turns to months. And as his unlikely employer and employee learn they enjoy working side by side. At the same time, Joachim discovers the family history he never knew. A criminal grandfather who died in prison, the wealthy father who abandoned him, and the dangerous criminal his twin has become. While Olivia struggles to put her life back together, Joachim's comes apart. Stripped of their old roles, they, they strive to discover the truth about each other and themselves, first as an employer and employee, then as friends. They are a man and woman who reach a place where the past doesn't matter and only what they are living now is true. All right, if you're interested in The Butler by Daniel Steele, it is coming out. October 5th. All right, so now we get into things that aren't, I think everything else comes out after October 5th. Yeah, 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 I was right. Okay, so evidently 
the former Secretary of State has decided that the former pre president is having all the fun and uh, she would like to join in. I say this because former President Clinton has written a couple of mysteries with James Patterson, one of which I talked about on the show. And in October, we have a book coming out called State of Terror by Louise Penny and Hillary Rodham Clinton. As you are, I am sh I'm sure well aware, uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton was the Secretary of State. She was also a Senator uh, and ran for president. So, and Louise Penny writes mysteries, I think. <laughs> I didn't stop to look it up before this, so I'm now just guessing. Anyway, State of Terror follows a novice Secretary of State who has joined the administration of her rival, a president inaugurated after four years of American leadership that shrank from the world stage. A series of terrorist attacks throws the global order into disarray and the secretary is tasked with assembling a team to unravel the deadly conspiracy, a scheme carefully designed to take advantage of an American government dangerously out of touch and out of power in the places where it counts the most. This high stakes thriller of international intrigue features behind the scenes global drama informed by details only an insider will know. This is being billed as written by two best-selling authors, which is accurate. Although I would point out uh, Rodham Clinton wrote nonfiction, uh, but she has Louise Penny to help her figure out plot and character and detail in that kind of way. We are also buying this on audio. So if you are interested in Slate of Terror, it comes out October 12th. I feel like the non-October 5th date is almost like a vote of confidence from the publisher. People will come to this. We don't have to set it on the very first Tuesday of the month. <laughs> I might be over-interpreting these things though. Okay, Dear Santa, which is by the queen of the Christmas stories, one, number one New York Times bestselling author, Debbie McComer. In this book, Lindy, Lindy Carmichael isn't feeling particularly joyful when she returns home to Wenatchee, Washington for Christmas. The man she thought was the one cheated on her with her best friend and she feels completely devoid of creativity in her graphic design job. Not even carolers or Christmas cookies can cheer her up, but Lindy's mother, Ellen, remembers an old tradition that might lift her daughter's spirits. Reading through a box of childhood letters to Santa and reminiscing about what she'd wished for as a young girl may be just the inspiration Lindy needs. With Ellen's encouragement, she decides to write a new letter to Santa, one that will encourage her to have faith and believe just as she's done all those years before. Little does Lindy know, but this exercise in gratitude will cause her wishes to unfold before her in miraculous ways. And thanks to some fateful twists of Christmas magic, especially an unexpected connection with a handsome former classmate, Lindy ultimately realizes that there is truly no place like home for the holidays. In Dear Santa, Debbie McComer celebrates the joys of Christmas blessings, old and new. So if you're interested in Dear Santa, it comes out October 19th. I have been taking Christmas books out of our lists a lot, but they're starting to come out. I will probably do an episode where we cover this year's Christmas stuff, like maybe after, maybe around Thanksgiving. Uh, so I will let you know about all of the many things that are already coming out for Christmas this year. All right, Silverview by John LeClaire. And I responded to the, this being on my list with, oh, John LeClaire's still alive, which is not necessary, but at any rate, he is, and this is his newest book. Julian Launce, these names, these names are killing me. It's L-A-W-N, D-S-L-E-Y, Lonsley. He's Julian from now on. Anyway, Julian has renounced his high-flying job in the city for a simpler life running a bookshop in a small English seaside town. But only a couple of months into his new career, Julian's evening is disrupted by a visitor. Edward, 
a Polish immigrant living in Silverview, the big house on the edge of town, seems to know a lot about Julian's family and is rather too interested in the inner workings of his modest new enterprise. When a letter turns up at the door of the spy chief in London, warning him of a dangerous leak, the investigations lead him to a quiet town by the sea. Silverview is a mesmerizing story of an encounter between innocence and experience and between public duty and private morals. In his distinct voice, John LeClaire seeks to answer the questions of what we truly owe to the people we love. We're also getting this on audio. So if you're interested in Silverview by John LeClaire, it comes out October 12th. All right, Forgiving Paris by Karen Kingsbury. You see what I mean by the ones that aren't on the fifth are like heavy hitters. John LeClaire, Karen Kingsbury, like boom, this book, people are gonna want this book which of course is why we are buying it. Anyway, Forgiving Paris by Karen Kingsbury. In Indiana, Ashley Baxter Blake and her husband are about to take an anniversary trip to Paris where a French gallery will show her paintings. But Ashley is hesitant. More than two decades ago, she made her most grievous mistake in Paris. She has never forgiven herself for what happened there. And she still harbors secrets that she's afraid will come to light. Just before the trip, Ashley gets a call from her niece. Jessie explains that her boyfriend's mother remembers working at a bakery with an American named Ashley. Could that be you? When Alice and Ashley meet, a flood of memories comes for both women, taking Ashley back to a reckless affair in an unexpected pregnancy and Alice to the night she nearly ended it all. Can this reunion bring healing and closure? Maybe it's finally time for Ashley to forgive herself and Paris. If you're interested in Forgiving Paris, it comes out October 26th. All right. And finally, last book of the day, we have Once Upon a Wardrobe by Patty Callahan. Meg's Devonshire is brilliant with numbers and equations, on a scholarship at Oxford, and dreams of solving the world, the greatest mysteries of physics. She prefers the dependability of facts, except for one. The younger brother she loves with all her heart doesn't have long to live. When George becomes captivated by a copy of a brand new book called The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and begs her to find out where Narnia came from, there's no way she can refuse. Despite her timidity about approaching the famous author, Meg soon finds herself taking tea with the Oxford Don and his own brother, employing them for answers. What she receives instead are more stories stories of Jack Lewis's life, which she takes home to George. Why won't Mr. Lewis just tell her plainly what George wants to know? The answer will reveal to Meg many truths that science and math cannot, and the gift she thought she was giving to her brother, the story behind Narnia, turns, ab turns out to be his gift to her instead, hope. This got a starred review from Library Journal, uh, Callahan's other books, which I believe include Becoming Mrs. Lewis, I thought that was her, um, which is also about C.S. Lewis. The, her other books have been popular. Uh, Becoming Mrs. Lewis was a pretty big hit. And if you enjoy that, you will probably enjoy Once Upon a Wardrobe. It comes out October 19th. All right, those are our books today. But don't forget, if you have a book here of these four that you would like, then put one of the names into the comments below along with your NPL location for pickup. I will start picking out and sending out gifts or books as soon as this is over. The newsletter should have gone at 11. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. It's in the description below. The Goodreads will have additional books that are going to be on the new book flyer. I do this every month. It's usually the ones that are like an, another installment in a series. And I know a lot of those people are waiting to hear about it and you guys might be interested in it. So be sure to check out that discussion board post, hopefully today, more likely tomorrow uh, on our Goodreads Tia New Book Tuesday group. And next week we are gonna talk about yellow labels, which is mysteries, thriller, and suspense. Let's go ahead and exit this thing right here. All right, guys, 
I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.